With the multiplayer challenges all wrapped up, I'm excited to dive into all sorts of mechanics and numbers to learn more about Blackout. And we may touch on challenges from time to time. The goal of this introductory video is to lay the groundwork for the testing methods that'll be used in any future videos and get us all on the same page when it comes to the basics. We'll have some fun looking at various movement speeds of things in the game. First up, understanding distance on the map, which I feel like should be general knowledge by now for any Blackout players, but I'm sure not everyone knows. Each of these sectors are 500 by 500 meters. In addition to reading that, I did also check myself using the longest kill indicator after a game, estimating the length of that kill on the map, drawing some triangles, and yeah, it seems to be 500 meters. Here I added a grid with 100 meter squares. I'll be using that a lot to judge distance. Pretty important to know, especially for challenges like the infamous True Sniper. To give you an in-game visual, thank you Knackle for being my target, this is what a person at 100 meters looks like. And now 200, which is the distance for the Reznov Extreme Range kill. Now 300 meters. And roughly 350, this is the true sniper challenge distance. That is a tough one, highly recommend waiting for that hardcore mode that is coming soon. Then 400. And 500 meters, which I couldn't even see with a 2 times scope. I was trying to keep that the same to give a consistent idea of just how far it is, but you need at least a 3 times to be able to see someone that far away. I plan to do a much more in-depth guide in the near future on ballistics and how high to aim to hit long-range shots with various weapons and scopes. For now, just running through the basics. Using this knowledge of distance, I figured I'd calculate a ton of different travel speeds that are in the game. I did that by auto walking in a straight line with the map pulled up so I could have a consistent start and end point. The turbine bridge was fantastic for that being very flat and pointed north. These are the results of the on foot testing. I did try everything with all of the skulker and mobility combinations, like only having one active, having them both, but I only wrote it here if it actually changed anything. Like mobility had no effect on prone, crouching, or walking speed. Not too surprising, it works like lightweight, except I measured a 7.5% increase in run speed, which I believe is much better than the 4% I've heard for lightweight in multiplayer. And mobility also essentially has dexterity and gung-ho all rolled into one, so you may not think of mobility as a top-tier perk that you need to take, like the healing or sound-based ones, but definitely worth picking up and using. I did also try running with and without level 2 armor, and there was no change in speed whatsoever. That movement speed decrease for armor in multiplayer does not apply in Blackout, you just make more noise. So nothing too shocking here, but if you want some real life context, average human walking speed is 1.4 meters per second. So you are crazy speed walking around in this game. Crouch walking is more than twice as fast as real life normal walking. And then average real life running speed is around 5 or 6 meters per second, so the running isn't as unrealistic, and Usain Bolt's top speed was around 12 and a half meters per second, so that's acceptable. Real life comparison aside, I was interested in how much faster sprinting was versus skulker crouch walking because they feel nearly the same in game, but I have raced people before and knew sprinting was a bit faster. If you were under the impression crouch walking with skulker was faster than sprinting, that is likely because you're closer to the ground, so it may feel that way. Skulker is often thought of as the crouch walking perk, but it does help with prone crawling as well, roughly double speed for both. And if you've never seen it, it looks hilarious, because your arm motions are sped up to match your movement speed. I feel like I'm baby Hudson here crawling around, or I'm swimming in the concrete, I don't know, very funny. Speaking of swimming, I tested that too, and I did these four things with mobility active as well, but that had no effect, not too surprising. Swimming underwater is indeed faster than being on the surface, you might have known that was the case. As for the real life comparison here, this is entirely unrealistic. Peak human swimming caps out around 2.5 meters per second, 3.5 with fins, yet somehow these superhumans can swim at twice that speed while weighed down with combat gear and ammo. Finally, here are the numbers for all the faster things, including the new vehicles, although those couldn't be done in private match, but thankfully PC is dead enough that I had some time to do it in the pregame lobby. I know you didn't need testing to know that something like the ATV is faster than the truck, but actually not by as much as I was expecting. The acceleration is the bigger issue there. And I was a little surprised by how much faster the Zodiac is than all of the land vehicles, but I guess you are pretty limited in where you can go. 
Sound travel time is a pretty cool one. They did incorporate a realistic travel speed for sound. If you get shot at from long range, you may hear the bullet whizzing by you before you hear the gunfire. Maybe the most common way you'd notice the delayed sound, though, is if you see a helicopter explode in the distance. That was 720 meters away, and it took about 2.1 seconds for that to reach me, as it should. One way I'll be using this information, outside of general curiosity, is to measure small distances. For example, I can crouch walk in a straight line for 5 seconds to get the distance I just walked, which I can use if I want to be showing something small, like the explosion radius of a grenade, and then for anything long range, like over 100 meters, I can get that with the map. Now, there's one more type of travel speed, or travel acceleration, that I didn't include there. For no reason at all, except curiosity, to wrap things up, I wanted to look into falling, and try to calculate what the gravity is in this world. Does it roughly match Earth? We're supposedly in Northern California, right? But given how everyone is a super athlete in this game, and it kind of feels like a meter is maybe shorter than it should be, who knows? Keep in mind, this won't be the most accurate thing in the world, but it's just for fun. I did a crouch walking test along one of these turbine blades because it did look to be the same size as the full thing, and I found it to be 52 meters long, which seems correct. That is also exactly how long it appears to be on the map. I used that measurement to get the height up to the turbine platform. Seems like a turbine is about 100 meters tall. Then I dropped some objects, and eventually myself, measuring the total time it took to hit the ground, and also watching how quickly it was moving at the top and at the bottom to check if it seemed like it was accelerating at a roughly constant rate. It only took about 3.1 seconds for everything dropped to hit the ground, which means the acceleration due to gravity looks to be about 21 meters per second squared. That is a big yikes, that isn't Earth-like at all, getting pretty close to Jupiter in fact. It turns out things fall very quickly in this game. I know there are a few ways that this wasn't the most accurate measurement, but it shouldn't be off by that much. I even went and found some high dive footage to make sure I wasn't way off. Here's this guy Dana Kunze setting a world record 52 meter dive back in the 70s, and it took three and a quarter seconds for him to hit the water, which I used to calculate the gravity in the same way, and did get 9.8. So I don't think I'm crazy, it seems like the world of Blackout is pretty nuts. Imagine walking around at 20 kilometers per hour, or 13 miles per hour, while being crushed into the ground weighing twice as much as you do now, with all your weapons and ammo also being twice as heavy. Damn. Well, I found that fun to look into, even though it is completely pointless. These are the kinds of things I want to be doing with these videos. Like I mentioned, I have a couple ballistics topics in the works, but I don't have a hard and fast plan for where I'll take things after that. It'll be pretty open to suggestions if there's something you want to see looked into that I can do, I can give it a go. I think it's a lot of fun to do the testing and collect all the numbers, but at the same time, Blackout is teetering on being a dead game on PC at this point. I don't say that to be an asshole, I just mean it can literally be very difficult to find a game, especially before the update. It is a bit better now, or for now, I should say. Anyway, if it turns out nobody cares about Blackout at all, then I can always find something else to do. Looking forward to seeing what people think. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.